Hello, it's Mrs. Westmoreland, and I'm now going to talk about the post-lab calculations for the empirical formula of magnesium oxide lab. So question number one asks you to find the mass of magnesium, the mass of the product, and the mass of oxygen. So the mass of magnesium is found using the data. So you simply subtract the mass of the empty crucible and lid from the mass of the crucible, lid, and magnesium. So in my sample data, I had 33.34 grams for the crucible, lid, and magnesium, and I subtract the 33.11 grams of just the crucible and lid by itself to get 0.23 grams for the mass of magnesium that was used in the lab. So if your mass measurements were to the hundreds place, then all three of the mass measurements should be to the hundreds place. If your scale read to the thousands place, then all three measurements should be to the thousands place. But you should use your data when doing these calculations. For the mass of the product, we also can use the data. So again, we're going to mat, subtract the mass of the crucible and lid empty from the crucible lid and product that you took after the reaction took place. And so again, in my data, I had 33.47 grams for the mass of the crucible lid and product and 33.11 grams for the crucible and lid so I get 0.36 grams for the product. Now finally we're looking at the mass of oxygen and the instructions say use the law of conservation of mass. So in this reaction we started with magnesium by itself in the crucible and then we burned it strongly uh, it, under high heat and the product is made of magnesium and oxygen so the oxygen from the atmosphere combines with the magnesium so the atoms the mass of magnesium does not change from before to after you keep the same number of atoms of magnesium before the reaction as after the reaction law of conservation of mass. So that means if the product is made up of both magnesium and oxygen, and we know the mass of magnesium, we can subtract that from the mass of the product to get the mass of the oxygen that was sort of added and combined with the magnesium in the chemical reaction. So that's 0.36 minus 0.23, and we get a mass of oxygen of 0.13 grams. Question number two asks you to find the percent composition of the product, the magnesium oxide. Now, there are two ways of doing this. You can use the data experimentally, or you can also use the theoretical molar masses from the periodic table. But in either case, we're taking the mass of the element over the mass of the compound and then multiplying by 100 to make that into a percent. So experimentally I'm just using my answers from number one 0.23 grams of magnesium divided by 0.36 grams of the product and that gives me 63.89 percent magnesium. Then I had 0.13 grams of oxygen over 36 grams of the product and that gives me 36.11 percent of oxygen. Theoretically using the molar mass we would need to have the chemical formula of magnesium oxide. So because magnesium is a 2a metal and 2 plus and oxygen is a 6a nonmetal and a 2 minus the theoretical empirical formula of magnesium oxide would just be MgO with the charges balancing out. And so we can find the theoretical percent composition by using the masses from the periodic table. 24 grams of magnesium over a total mass of 24 plus 16 to get 60 percent magnesium and 16 grams of oxygen over 40, which is again 24 plus 16 for a percent of oxygen of 40 percent. Question number three asks you to find 
the moles of magnesium and the moles of oxygen. And so I'm just using my answers to number one of grams and dividing by the molar mass of each element from the periodic table to get the moles. So this is the mass to mole step of the empirical formula process. So we take the mass that was measured and we divide by the molar mass in grams per mole to get the moles um, of each element that we have. And we want to keep a lot of significant figures in this step. So I chose to keep four significant figures in each one of my number of moles. And then step number four asks you to find the mole ratio and therefore the empirical formula. And so that would be the divide by small step of the empirical formula calculation. So I take my two answers to number three. I choose the smaller of the two answers and I divide through by that number into both of the other numbers. And so 0.008125 divided by itself is just 1, and 0.009583 divided by 0.008125 is 1.2. Now at this point, in a made-up problem, you would expect to have a very recognizable fraction in the decimal form, like 0.25 is a fourth, or 0.33 is a third. Since this is an experiment, and numbers don't always work out exactly the way we hope them to be in an experiment, I got 1.2. So not really close enough to say it's 1, and not really close enough to say it's 1.25. So I just rounded it to 1.2, and then the last step, which is the multiply till whole step, I want to find something that I can multiply by that that 1.2 will turn into a whole number. So 1.2 multiplied by 5 uh, becomes 6. And so if I multiply both 1.2 and 1 by 5, that gets me my 6 to 5 whole number ratio, and that becomes the subscripts of my empirical formula. So you should do all of these calculations with your own data. At this point, when you're trying to uh, divide by small and multiply to whole, do your best to find some whole number ratio, to find some number that you can multiply through to make um, a whole number ratio in your empirical formula. We're going to omit 5 through 7 in these calculations for now. Um, the idea of theoretical yield and percent yield and writing balance the chemical equations is something we're going to be doing a little farther in the future, so I'm just going to omit those for now. So question number eight asks us to analyze the error of this experiment. And so since my experimental empirical formula that I determined in number four is MG6O5, I have a six magnesium to five oxygen ratio. But as I did in the percent composition theoretical calculation, I saw that theoretically the ratio of magnesium to oxygen should be one to one because of their charges. And so in my experiment, I have too much magnesium or too little oxygen to make my ratio kind of unbalanced towards the magnesium side. And this is primarily caused by two uh, factors. So if not all of your magnesium reacted to turn into magnesium oxide, that means you didn't combine as much oxygen as you thought um, you should. You're assuming that everything has turned into magnesium oxide in this reaction. Um, and so as you inspected that product, you probably saw some pieces of it that kind of still had the appearance of the magnesium metal and hadn't 100% changed into that product, the powdery gray product of magnesium oxide. So if we have some leftover magnesium in the crucible, well then our ratio of magnesium to oxygen is going to be too high. Um, and a second fairly common error of this is the loss of the product as smoke. So if you allowed smoke to escape from the crucible when you were raising its lid, that smoke is actually 
vaporized magnesium oxide powder and so therefore your final mass would be too small your mass of oxygen would be too small and you would end up with a ratio that's a little skewed this way we'll have an open comp book post lab quiz over this laboratory analysis coming up thank you